wealthy, of wealthy and distinguished parents, but was born blind. Once, when St. Francis preached at Rieti, the father of Illuminatus invited him to lodge at his home. Now when St. Francis came into the house, the parents brought the blind boy to him and urgently begged St. Francis to bless him. Filled with compassion, St. Francis made the sign of the cross over the child's eyes, and at once the child could see. St. Francis also told the parents in advance that later the boy would join his order, and thus it happened. When the boy had grown to young manhood and had gained a splendid education, he recognized that all the glamour of the world offered all the glamour the world offered him in his eminent position was in reality only passing and dazzling tinsel. He desired better and more lasting treasures, and therefore earnestly begged St. Francis for admission into his order. St. Francis gave him with the habit the name of Illuminatus, that is the enlightened one, not only because he had miraculously received the sight of his bodily eyes, but more so because the grace of God had enlightened his mind to recognize the vanity of the world and devote himself to the service of God. Illuminatus did indeed evince a fine understanding of higher things and with it lively zeal to advance in perfection. He became one of the most beloved disciples of St. Francis, who chose him as his companion on his journey to Syria. When they arrived at Demetia, they came up upon the camp of the crusaders, who were just then making ready for battle against the unbelievers. St. Francis said to his companions, God has revealed to me that if they launch this offensive, great misfortune will befall the Christians. If I tell them this, they will laugh me to scorn. But if I remain silent, my conscience will reprove me. What do you think about it? Illuminatus answered, Brother, do not be disturbed about the judgment of men. Act according to your conscience and fear God more than men. And so Francis announced to the Christians the revelation that had been granted him and warned them against making the attack. He was scoffed at, but the battle terminated in defeat for the Christian army. Illuminatus was so trusted by St. Francis that he disclosed to him the miraculous way in which he had received the sacred stigmata so that Illuminatus could bear witness to the fact after the death of St. Francis. He lived 40 years after the death of his spiritual father and was one of the most reliable witnesses of his admirable life. In 1266, he died on the 5th of May, regarded by all as a saint, and was laid to rest in the church of St. Francis of Assisi. On True Enlightenment Consider how the servant of God, Illuminatus, was granted the gift of true enlightenment. True enlightenment is nothing but true knowledge of things, and he is truly enlightened who has a knowledge of things which corresponds with reality. But there can be no truer knowledge than that which faith and grace bestow upon us, because this knowledge proceeds from the Father of light and the source of all truth. It was this light that made an enlightened man of Illumin the enlightened that it made an enlightened man of Illuminatus in his estimation of the glamour of the world. It enlightened also us. Consider how idle is the false enlightenment of the class of the people who like to regard themselves as the enlightened class. They despise faith and divine revelation and hold as right and true only what they can comprehend with their pu puny intelligence. They act like the person who heavenly curtain curtains the windows of his home so that no ray of sunshine can penetrate, and then lights an oil lamp, declaring that he can trust only the light of his own lamp. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, Romans 1, 20. Is not such foolishness to be pitied? Consider how enlightened the advice was which Illuminatus gave St. Francis to follow the voice of God in his conscience and not heed the judgment of men. The fruit of true enlightenment is ours when we carry out in our lives the truths revealed by God and our faith. The reason why so many people end up with false enlightenment is because they refuse to apply the truths of Christian revelation in their lives. That is why they hate and deny the truth and end up in folly. Christ is our teacher as well as our leader. He says, he who follows me walks not in darkness, John 8, 12. May his teaching, his example, and his warning gracious grace constant and his, his warning grace constantly guide us. Prayer of the Church We beseech you, O Lord, incline your ear to our prayers and enlighten the darkness of our minds through the grace of your visitation who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.